Since 1990, the NASCAR Bush Series has run here at New Hampshire International Speedway. But today, there's another concern to deal with. There's a major threat of rain during the running of the Gum Out 200. Taking a look at the weather conditions right now, the temperature is in the high 50s with a dew point at 52. There's a chance of fog and, yes, a chance of showers. But the bottom line is we are set to go racing for the NASCAR Bush and Bush North Series. Hi, everybody. I'm Eli Gold. Welcome to New Hampshire International Speedway. So many of the drivers who are racing here today have never been to this racetrack. But, Buddy Baker, that's not bothered them in preparation. The youngsters have found a new way to learn. Absolutely. Would you believe computer game number two, NASCAR? They go out, they can actually run the track not being here, make mistakes without tearing up cars, and know something about the racetrack by a computer game. That's what it's gone to. But the bottom line is still the youth and Dr. Dick Bergwin. Some very interesting names in the top ten qualifiers today. It's a very unusual field of the top five guys in today's field. Three of them have never won a race in this series. Indeed, two of them between those two guys have just got 10 starts in this series and that could lead to either a real upset winner today or a real big crash. Now we do have two races for you today. 200 laps for the NASCAR Bush Series, 100 laps for the NASCAR Bush North Series, their third event of the year. Let's check out some of the pertinent facts and figures today. The AutoZone prep for the race, brought to you by the more than 1,900 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. And yes, Mike McLaughlin, who has run so very well here in so many different types of race cars, is also in the field today, so he's one we'll be talking about. As to who everybody else is, let's check out the Duralube starting grid. Brought to you by Duralube, tomorrow's technology today. Second pole in the series for Joe Bessie. There's the Nashville pole sitter, Casey Atwood. Mark Green and Elton Sawyer's best start of the year. Wayne Grubb, local favorite, Andy Santer. Elliot Sandler, who won at Bristol in the series champion, Randy LaJoy. Robert Presley, 200th career start in the series for Phil Parsons. Happy birthday, Tim Fedoa celebrates here today. On down the line, there's Tony Stewart, heads to Indianapolis tomorrow, and Dale Earnhardt Jr., his first ever start here. Hey, how about Ed Barrier, buddy? Here's a guy who did so well at Hickory. First time ever he won at Hickory, and I tell you what, momentum's on his side. Can anybody handle Mike McLaughlin, Dick? He's had a lot of problems with the car, but they think they've got it sorted out, and he sure knows this racetrack, you like. And, of course, veteran Dick Trickle is there. Stanton Barrett is in the 50 this week, subbing still for the injured Jimmy Foster. Jeff Purvis on down the line. Patty Moise qualifying in row number 16. Ted Christopher, the number 13, he's good from up here, Dick. Oh, they love him here. He is a win em or wreck -em kind of racer, and he's got a lot of fans in this grandstand. Hutter with an accident yesterday. Jason Jarrett with an accident yesterday. And there you see the entire starting field, including Mark McFarland, who goes shotgun on the grid. The field completing the first of three warm-up laps on a very chilly day here in New Hampshire. While we've got a chance, let's go trackside. Glenn Jarrett. Hey, thanks, Eli. You know, there's a couple of young guys right up front that we're going to keep our eye on today. First of all, on the outside of the first row, starting second, Casey Atwood, the 17-year-old from Nashville, Tennessee. Incredible story about this young man. Sat on the pole at Nashville, finished second. He hopes to reverse that today. He could win this race. Meanwhile, back on row three on the outside, starting sixth, Andy Santera, New England native. He has over 2,500 miles experience on this racetrack. Would love nothing better than to win in front of the New England fans. Joining me on pit road today, here's Matt Yoakum. Well, Glenn, Maine's Joe Bessie Hunt's momentum building performance from the pole. He has three Bush North victories here in Loudoun, but he's never won a Bush Grand National South win here on the Magic Mile. Today, starting well deep in the field, is the defending winner, Mike McLaughlin. He's got six victories on the Magic Mile, but today, Magic Shoes begins his run to repeat from the 22nd position. Eli? So there are just some of the stories we'll be following for you over the course of the day today here at the New Hampshire International Speedway in Loudoun, New Hampshire. Before we go any further, I want to say a big hello to a couple of gentlemen who aren't with us here today. One is the president of this racetrack, Gary Bear. Gary is recovering from some medical problems and I know is uh, watching this telecast today. And Gary, we look forward to seeing you back here at the Magic Mile when we come back here in just a few weeks' time. Also a big hello to Bill Baumgartner. 
He is the owner of the base motorsports team. That's the Randy LaJoy, Tim Fidoa cars. He had a mild heart problem earlier in the week. He's already back home after a visit to the hospital. But, Bill, you're being missed up here. Everybody wants to say hello. And in a personal note, happy anniversary to my wife, Claudette. 21 years we've been together. And uh, typical in this business, I'm up here. She's in Alabama. But, uh, sweetheart, happy anniversary. Congratulations to you and also to Greg Sachs on the mend in Florida. Greg, we're thinking about you and know you'll be back at the racetrack pretty soon. He was injured in Texas in a pretty severe wreck there. The lights are just coming back on atop the safety car, so we are not going green this time by. There you see Dick Trickle and the onboard camera that he'll be uh, riding us around the speedway in today. Field is getting the one to go yet again. Shane Hall has the Big A Auto Parts sponsorship on board the car this week. It's normally the Andretti Laird racing team, the number 96 that has the Big A Auto Parts. But while that team kind of uh, sits back for a couple of weeks and regroups and reorganizes, the Big A sponsorship is on board Shane Hall's car here at New Hampshire International Speedway today. One of the interesting stories today will be strategy with weather in the forecast. They're talking about the good probability of rain this afternoon. This thing could be complete at lap 101. Now they're going to have to make at least one pit stop today, and they could easily go to lap 100. The question is, if you do that, you could get stuck having to make your pit stop under a green flag situation. At least one team, Purvis team, is going to try to do that. They're going to play this thing as if it's going to go to 101, and that's it. Field now just about a half lap away from going back to green or going to green the first time. Average age of the top 10 of the NASCAR Bush Series points. You've got the trickle down effect and the non trickle down effect. Hermie Sadler has stopped on pit road. There's trouble with the engine. The hood is up on that car. Hermie had a problem here in practice yesterday car just didn't get the grip coming off the corner and uh, spun had no damage done but he's going to be on pit road as the field gets set to go green green flag is in the air and we are racing the gum out 200 underway and a car quickly in the wall and problems on the main straightaway dennis setzer in the 48 spins that is Setzer sitting right there. Looked like Buckshot Jones in the double zero ended up in the wall as they gunned it for the start, buddy. That happens a lot of times when the lead cars come down, kind of break before they get on the accelerator. Dennis Setzer on the front straightaway backwards on the uh, oncoming traffic as they come off turn four. Everybody sees him. The caution is out. So Joe Bessie will take the caution, lap number one, after problems on the start. And the shot we had looking right back up the main straightaway, Dick, you probably saw the guys quickly shuffling towards the wall. And uh, we'll have to take another look, buddy. Eli, usually what happens is the lead cars will not go when everybody's anticipating a start. And further back in the group, it's like a, a chain reaction on a freeway. As you get back through the field, you have less time to get on the brakes, and it just collects a lot of cars. So we are under caution. Now let's take a look again, guys, and see what happened here. Watch in the middle of the field. Let's see who gets out of shape first. Not to the inside. There goes Buckshot. Bang. I think you got tagged. He might have gotten hit by uh, Stanton Barrett in the 50. Yep, who might have gotten hit by somebody as well. Yeah. You could see back in the back there, about halfway back, the oncoming cars were expecting a start, and they started to accelerate, and all of a sudden they realized that the green hadn't come out, so that's what happened on that particular wreck. That is Dennis Setzer on board, and there you still see Hermie Sadler never did take the green here at New Hampshire. We're coming right back. Welcome back to New Hampshire. That is Stanton Barrett, who is driving for the ailing Jimmy Foster. And as you can see, uh, the Dr. Pepper team is running, although somewhat beaten up on this first lap accident that came right to the start finish line. Let's look at it again, guys, from some of the in cars. Matt Hutter in the Stanley machine was right around this. And let's see what he saw. Now 
Well, there goes Christopher across the middle in the 13, and he took out Setzer. Something else keyed all of that, though. Yeah, you know, everybody knows the rain is coming, and they're all so anxious to get this thing going, and you can see it in the back of the pack, just cars going inside, outside. Everybody's trying to get into that first turn as quickly as possible, and that's not a good way to start the race. And You know, it's so bizarre. We're all worried about finishing this thing. We can't get it started. <laughs> Eli, what happens there is that you have a spotter up on the top of the grandstand, and once he thinks the green's coming out, he says, green, 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 and the guys start accelerating back in the pack there, and a lot of times you get swept into something because you don't actually see the flag out yet. Now, Ted Christopher has taken his car behind the wall. Dennis Setzer was towed behind the wall, and Hermie Sandler, who never did take the green, you saw him on pit road before, he's been pushed to the garage area, and we'll be getting a report on uh, all of those teams here very, very shortly, but uh, tough, tough start for uh, a number of these teams here in the gum out 200. Got a feel for Setzer. This was his first start of the year. He's been doing a lot of testing for Bill Elliott, but this was his first opportunity in 1998 to get into a race car and take a green flag, and he hardly even got a chance to do that. Yeah. Well, later on this year, Kenny Irwin Jr. is going to take the uh, driving seat in the 48. That is speculation right now to get seat time. Uh, too bad for Dennis Setzer, a uh, very, very good race car driver. I'd like to see somebody pick him up and put him in a regular ride. And the same thing for uh, Ted Christopher. He had planned to run here. Richmond, Nazareth, and Watkins Glen just wanted seat time not to come today. Green flag. We're back racing lap five. Joe Bessie is the leader. Three is Dale Earnhardt Jr. going to the outside. Way to the outside. Eli, that's a dangerous place to be on this racetrack right now. They do not have a second crew. You can see the guys go down. You give way as you see right there Casey Atwood in 28 takes over second back here. Earnhardt fighting on the outside. At the moment, he has a little momentum through the upper turn there, but one and two is definitely the low part of the racetrack is quick. Elliott Sadler there in that black 66 all the way to the inside. Grabs the position from the 74, Randy LaJoy. So Elliott now up into the seventh position. Yeah, but then he lost then it. Then he loses it to Robert Presley. Yeah, you don't want to be up high on this racetrack right now. They get some rubber down later in the race, it'll be okay. But right now, upstairs is not the place to be. Riding with Phil Parsons, looking rearward from ninth place. The 17 is Matt Kenseth. The three directly behind Phil Parsons, that's Dale Earnhardt Jr. 33 is Tim Fedewa. And just behind them, Tony Stewart in the uh, yellow nose car that you can see in the background there. These guys are really going at it. This is a quick way, right on the bottom of the racetrack. As you sweep out, you can see the outside groove here. Coming off the corner, they have good momentum, but through the center part, they lose a lot. While we watch this battle, Matt, how about an update on uh, Hermie Sadler's problems? The DeWalt team is searching over the 29 car for the Gremlin. It appears something is amiss in the fuel system. They've changed the fuel line. Still, that hasn't fixed it. It appears that Hermie Sadler's monkey has grown to a gorilla. So more bad luck for Hermie. It's a shame. He had a good car today. He was hoping for a good run. Really was. Too bad there for Hermie. And they had a, a spin yesterday, but they were able to continue. That's kind of the same car they had at Bristol. Kind of, I say, because that's a new rear cliff and a whole new body after that accident there in Bristol when he was running ninth. Good battle now behind Earnhardt, who's in the three. Fedua, 33. Kenseth, 17. That yellow, black, and white, number 44, Tony Stewart. Fedua's birthday today, and they yeah. changed the decor of his race car. His name used to be over the door where he went in. Now it's his birthday boy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's Tony Stewart. You're looking through the side camera there as they go down the straightaway down towards turn three. And Tony's that's a racer. Yeah, he, and he, as a matter of fact, he's happy they're running here today with the threat of rain because tomorrow he has to be at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway for the start of practice. And Jeff Fuller, had this race been delayed by rain, Jeff Fuller would have been the driver in that shell car tomorrow. And tonight he's going to be in Kentucky racing a dirt late model. Remarkable. <laughs> it really is. That end car camera there, that was, uh, you can see the 17 car there. Matt Kenton, winner at Rockingham earlier this year, his first ever uh, Bush Grand National win. 52 is Kevin Grott right there in that battle that you see for 15th spot. Lance Hooper is in the 23. He was also in that mix. Oh, don't do it. There 
goes Grubb to the inside of Kenseth. 14th spot, swapping hands right there. I think right now Matt Kenseth is having a little uh, handling problem. He's not able to stay on the lower part of the racetrack. You can see him dropping back after a great run right at first. Hooper goes by. We're on board with Kevin LePage and the Channel Lock Chevrolet there seconds ago. He's in the 40. 77 is Ed Barrier, the winner at Hickory. 13 laps complete of 200. Heavy overcast, big threat of rain. But the good news is the wind is blowing out of the north, keeping that rain somewhere off the coast and down towards the Boston Way. Do I sound like a weather guy? You do a good job. Yeah, yeah you are. You definitely know more than the New England weather guy. I'll tell you that. <laughs> all, sorts of, all sorts of cumulonimbuses flying around, stuff like that. There goes Mike McLaughlin in the 34, Mike Dillon in the 72, also bypassing Kenseth again, guys. As you said, Matt just can't stay and keep it low on the racetrack. I talked to Robbie Reiser, the car owner, this morning, and they were saying that they just couldn't get the car comfortable for Kenseth. They had worked on it, worked on it, but, you know, those guys don't have nearly as much experience as many of the other teams, and they have not been able to dial the car in. The 34 there, Mike McLaughlin, he won here last year in this particular race, and I'll tell you what, don't count him out. He has a lot of knowledge on this racetrack, and he'll work his way to the front. Joe Bessie, our leader, going down into turn one, right on the bottom of the racetrack, handling very well. He's there by one and three-tenths seconds now on Casey Atwood. There is Casey in the white machine, running in second. Elton Sawyer, a strong third. Good run for Santerre, being challenged now by LaJoy right there. That is for fourth and fifth. Give it to LaJoy from Connecticut around Maine's Andy Santer. But nobody is touching Joe Bessie, Glenn. He's been quick all week. He absolutely has, Eli. He's been first on every sheet NASCAR has posted so far this weekend. He was the fastest in both practice sessions. He drew first to go out qualifying. He sat on the pole, and he's jumped to a big lead. This is Joe's 100th career Bush Grand National start. It was his second pole. He has three Bush North victories here at this speedway, and the car he's running right now is the same car he won with last fall at Dover. So if he's going to pick up another win in front of the uh, hometown New England fans, he's got a mighty good shot at doing it today. He does that. Good battle for Joe Bessie. Good run right now. Also a good battle ongoing for 10th and 11th right now between Glenn Allen Jr. and Dale Earnhardt Jr. There it is, the 99 and the 3 right there. Well, Dale Earnhardt Jr. was caught on the outside of the racetrack. Now he's able to keep the car down on the bottom of the racetrack, right in the middle of the corner, as you can see, very, very strong now. If you're keeping tabs, Stanton Barrett has returned from the garage four laps down. Here comes Dennis Setzer, 17 laps down. He, too, is back from the garage area after that accident on the initial start of the race. As you're watching Earnhardt Jr. in that number three car, you might wonder how he found the line here. And the answer is that Randy LaJoy stuck him in a rental car along with Casey Atwood, and they took some laps around here. And LaJoy said, this is where you want the car to be as they went around the racetrack. I asked Atwood how fast he'd go. He said, he wasn't slow. <laughs> <laughs> Casey Atwood, very talented young racer, but the man on the move right now is Randy LaJoy. There's the leader, Joe Bessie, but LaJoy is now up to third and challenging here in New Hampshire. Way watching the Joe Show. Joe Bessie by two and two tenths seconds now is the race leader over that man, Randy LaJoy, who when we left you was in third. He is now running in the second spot, and here's how he made the pass on young Casey Atwood moments ago going into the corner. The white car, Casey Atwood, look at LaJoy swing to the inside, down the front straight away. Casey sees he has the move, lets him go into turn one. It's early in the race. Casey did a very, very smart thing. Glenn Jarrett's been around the uh, Randy LaJoy pit. Glenn? Well, Eli, I talked to Randy first thing this morning, and I asked him how he, how he ran in practice yesterday. He said, man, I'm ready to go. This is the first time all year I felt racing. I got a car that's going to win the race today. I'm going to the front. And I said, can I quote you on that? He said, quote me on that. I will go to the front. He's radioed into the crew, guys, that his car feels perfect. And, you know, these guys are showing off. Randy 
Vegas from Connecticut. His crew chief Steve Burt and his uh, or his uh, co-crew chief Steve Burt and Billy Nasworth. All these guys are from the Northeast. They're showing off in front of the hometown fans. Meantime, Joe Bessie's crew is talking to him. He's got a little bit of a problem. A little loose in the center of the corner and is pushing coming off. I got a feeling it won't be long before Randy runs him down. Well, we'll have to wait and see as we watch now a good battle for ninth place shaping up on the racetrack. There that battle is. It is nine seconds behind the leader, but you've got Grubb Allen, then Earnhardt Jr., Fidua, and Tony Stewart in that order. A good battle from ninth position on back. Looking at Earnhardt Jr. right now, his car very, very quick in the corners. I say down the straightaway, he's just about like everybody else, but boy, in the corner, that car is dynamite. You can see him closing up. Allen is making a great move in the 99, but it seems to me right now that Earnhardt, he's running a drop snap car for the layman out there that does not know what I'm talking about. That's a better roll center for this type of flat racetrack. It makes it turn better getting in the corner, also in the center. And as it goes along, a drop snap car should have an advantage over the standard uh, regular setup in the corner. He's got something else going for him, too, and that is the team that's behind him. Last year, Earnhardt's team with driver Steve Park finished second in this event. Uh, David Green drove for them the year before. He was third. His dad, Dale Sr., drove here in 1992 and finished second to Joe Nemechek. So these guys absolutely know how to get around the Hampshire Speedway. They do not need a roadmap. Jeff Green has driven for that team as well. And interestingly, in the second race today, the Bush North Series gum out 100, a number of those cars are former Dale Earnhardt Incorporated race cars. So uh, a lot of uh, heritage, if you will, here today for DEI, Dale Earnhardt Incorporated. I meant Jeff Green. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Bessie continues to lead. That is the battle for ninth on back that we've been watching. Phil Parsons in 15th closing in on that pack as well. Oh, you can see Earnhardt got a little sideways just then. It turned a little too well in the center part of the corner. Ken Fiedel gained about four car lengths on him right in the center part of the corner. Tony Stewart just paying it back there in the number 44 car. You know, when he ran here in the Indy Racing League event a couple of years ago, he about lapped the world three times and then broke with 18 laps to go and, and, and never won the race. But that man, when he was, he said it's totally different, obviously, the IRL machines to uh, to this NASCAR Bush Series car. But he said, yeah, I love this racetrack. I have a good feel for it. It just takes a little while to get used to the heavier car here. It's, there goes Glenn Allen Jr. with the 99. He almost had the car in position to get by Grubb there, but could not make the pass going down in the corner. You have to be very, very careful getting into the corner that the car in front of you realizes you're there because if you make contact there, it's going to take both cars out. Meanwhile, Joe Bessie continues to pace the field, but now as he puts a lap on Dennis Setzer, his advantage is only 1.8 seconds on a quickly closing Randy LaJoy. We're coming right back. Hey, that is Joe Bessie showing the way here. The gum out 200 for the NASCAR Bush Series machines here at New Hampshire International. Eli Gold, Dick Bergman, Buddy Baker, Glenn Jarrett, Matt Yoakum on hand here. Now there's the advantage that all of a sudden Bessie has. He was 1.8 seconds. We went away. LaJoy got caught up in a little traffic moments ago, and it spread things just a touch more. There is Randy now back on. Uh, took him a while to get around Dennis Setzer, and that's where that extra half second of uh, spread came from. But, you know, that car right there is a brand new car, and yesterday they were more concerned with the new car blues. They had, they had a number of little oil leaks, and a lot of times, if you get the chance, teams will take a new car somewhere to Greenville Pickett Speedway or someplace just to shake it down and make sure all the fittings are, are hooked up right. But they were chasing that oil leak, buddy, yesterday. Uh, just a bunch of new car blues they didn't have a chance to get rid of before they came north. Eli, that's exactly right. When you're going to run a car in a, in a special event, and this is a special event because Randy LaJoy has not won this year. Very uncommon for that racing team, not to have won by this time. Not even let a lap. And, and when you do that, when you go to a racetrack and you run it maybe 100 miles, you really pick up a lot of things that you don't have time and practice to pick up. I'll tell you what, he has had such a terrible year so far in 1998, Randy LaJoy. Last year at this point, with nine races in, he had won twice. This year he hasn't won yet. 
Last year at this point he had five top fives. This year he's only got two. And last year at this point he had led 407 laps. This year, Goose, none. He's got three DNS already this year. He had none to this point last year. Let's update you on a couple of stories. Hermie Sadler is now on the racetrack, finally. The word we're getting from the garage is that they had some water in the fuel lines, and obviously uh, that is conducive to the car not wanting to fire. So uh, they've gotten it all flushed out. He's back on the racetrack. The 17 car, though, is an interesting story. Matt Kenseth, there he is on the right of your screen. Remember, he started back in 14, and Glenn, now he's back in 27th position, 26th at this second. Uh, what's the story there? Yeah, Eli, and I uh, appreciate that. I, I follow your directions here real well. I, I got down here. He's uh, The guys tell me the car is very, very tight. He just cannot turn the car. What that does here on these flat corners, you have to wait so long to get into, fuel, into, into the throttle, and the straightaway so long, you just never do pick up the RPM. So not only is it killing him in the corners, but also down the straightaway, too. They've got the wrenches out, and they're talking down here. They're going to make a major adjustment when he stops. But uh, right now, this cool overcast weather, not doing Matt Kipton, the kids of any good at all. Hey, buddy, that is not a drop snout car. That is not a drop snout, but I'll tell you one thing. When you have one pushing like this, you cannot get back in the throttle when the front tires don't get in grip, so you have to stay out of the throttle, and it really affects the car down the straightaway, too. They're 16th on back, Mike McLaughlin, then you've got Mike Dillon, followed by Lance Hooper, and the Justin Boots car. Good run for Jason Keller here right now. Jason running in 19th position as our friends at Napa bring you NASCAR timing and scoring across the top of the screen. Jason Keller hoping to be able to keep that uh, Justin Boots sponsorship on board for the remainder of the season. There comes Jeff Purvis right in behind him as well in the four machine. He's running in 20th spot. Oh, second behind the race leader Joe Bessie and there you see Bessie in traffic and here comes LaJoy about to put a lap on Kevin Schwantz in the 88 the last time Schwantz ran here was when this was the Briar Motorsports Park and he was on two wheels on one of his famed motorcycles for Schwantz the 1993 world motorcycle champion who has now cast his lot with NASCAR there he goes a lap down to Randy LaJoy let me tell you what's in Joe Bessie's mind right now as he's weaving his way through traffic. Don't bend the race car. He has crashed the last five races, DNF in three of those races, to here. He's been fast repeatedly this year, but the problem has been wrecks. Other people have come out of the wilderness and just taken him out race after race after race, and he knows that is his Achilles heel. So he is being exceptionally careful as he weaves his way through traffic this afternoon. Classic example of the box score not telling the whole story. He runs awfully well, but it's just around the end to show it. You saw him get around Blaze Alexander moments ago, that black and yellow machine that he just put a lap on. Alexander in 33rd spot. Bessie with three Bush North wins here. This is perhaps one of his best racetracks of the whole circuit. Certainly it's a hometown crowd. Matter of fact, Bessie on the pole for this race. Kelly Moore, who was on the Bud Pole for our second race today, both of them are from the state of Maine, Bessie and Moore. Both running at Beach Ridge Speedway Stay up. in Maine. Stay up. However, let us point out, for those of you who are curious as we watch uh, Joe Bessie continue, no one will ever hold the Beach Ridge Speedway track record on dirt other than our own Dr. Dick Bergman. Fastest man on dirt in that track history. Of course, now it's paved. I think your record is probably secure on dirt. And I hope they never dig up the pavement. The only <laughs> record I've got in all of auto racing. Why did you race in those days? Sprint cars. Sprint I, cars. It was a great joint to run a sprint car at. I loved it. I just wanted to explain there was nothing wrong with Dick Bergman just a second ago. That's the way down south that the people that are listening up there. That's, that's, that's how they say yeah up there. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Unscheduled pit stop for Mark Kroll while you watch the battle for fourth place on the racetrack. 
There you see fading just a bit. Tim Fidua. He's got a new crew chief as well. Just joined up with the team at Talladega. Vic Kanga's second yep. race with Tim Fidua. Trying to turn that team around. See if they can get them up front where they really do belong. And which enters had been crew chief. His see, last event was a victory. See, I'm looking at Robert Presley in the 59 there. He and Elliot Sadler right now are really running very, very well as they close in on Elton Sawyer just in front of them there. These guys look like they're working traffic very well. Uh, it seems, though, that, I mean, right now, Casey Atwood's dropping back just a little bit. The 59 of Presley could be a major factor before this day has done it over with. Of the nine races he has run here, he's led three of them for 179 laps. He's won, been second, been fifth, been seventh. Four top tens in eight starts. That's not bad. I would say not. 49 laps on the board. Still Joe Bessie. Now by two and a half seconds as the leaders work traffic here in New Hampshire. See by one and three tenths of a second, he is the race leader here at New Hampshire International Speedway. 55 laps of 200 are in the books. Remember, weather permitting, we have two races for you today. This race followed by a 100 lapper for the NASCAR Bush North Series. From the lead, let's swap back now to Casey Atwood, 28, 38 Elton Sawyer, Robert Presley in the 59, and the 66 Elliott Sadler. That battle now has backslid by three seconds behind the race leader. So Casey's hanging in there, buddy, but a bit off the pace of Joe Bessie. Well, I think Dennis Adcock, his crew chief, may have told him he real smart in the first part of the race. You need the seat time. He's never been to this racetrack. Set on the outside pole, running a very competitive race right now. And he looked in the mirror. He saw Elton Sawyer just behind him. He picked the pace up just a little bit. He's doing a great job today. He's an amazing young man. He really is. He's just a teenager, still in high school, doing his studying at home so he can focus on his racing as well. But he's got a tremendous amount of maturity given the limited experience he has had, particularly in the big leagues. Yeah, he qualified at Rockingham. We're talking about Casey Atwood in the 28. He qualified Nashville in the pole. There's a good battle for seventh now. Dale Earnhardt Jr. trying to make the move around the 37 of Mark Green. Tried him outside. Tried him inside. Gee, who does that look like? Yeah. <laughs> I know I know his father sitting at home going, you know, that boy looks just like somebody I know. I wonder who. It, it's an amazing resemblance. <laughs> uh, I watched Little Earnhardt do these things, race after race after race, and I see so much of his father in him. Um, it, it's just absolutely amazing. And Dale Jr. says he really hasn't watched the tapes of his father. He's been to the races plenty and seen what his father has done. But of all the people I've ever seen try to imitate Dale Earnhardt, this guy does it better than anybody. Yeah, and Matt Yoakum, this is Dale Jr.'s first time to race here, isn't it? It sure is, Eli. This is also one of Dale Jr.'s first starts in a drop snout car. He's taken a few laps to get used to the car. A car very similar to what Steve Park drove to second place here last year. He was held up by the 99 car, Glenn Allen. Once he got by him, he said his car felt a little more neutral. He was tight following the 99 car. But keep in mind, during pit stops, Robbie Fuller blew out his knee playing basketball at the hotel Thursday night. Tony Urey Sr. will be going over the wall, changing the right rear tires on the pit stops today for Dale Jr. And there you see, while Matt was talking, Randy LaJoy, for the first time this year, leading a lap in a NASCAR Bush Series race. He made the move around Joe Bessie and blew right on by him. And again, who would have thought May the 9th would be the first lap all year that LaJoy would have led? Watch this power move. Way up high. Going to make a try on the outside. He's on the outside going into turn wow. three. Bessie yeah. sees he has momentum on the outside. He realizes he caught him very, very quick. So apparently Bessie's car has gone off just a little bit. Randy's car is doing a great job in the middle part of the corner. So Matt Hutter has just pitted. Yeah, Matt Hutter in on the Stanley machine. We're at lap number 61. For those of you keeping tabs. Back to the stripe leading. He 
realize every once in a while in my racing career, if somebody was running as well as the Joy, I would just drop back and run behind him a few laps to see what, how he was getting around the racetrack so well. Maybe he was running a little different groove around the racetrack, changing his line through the corners. And you really can go to school on a guy that's getting around quicker than you. And apparently, you can see he's keeping up right now with Randy LeJoy. He may have a different approach in the corner or something. I just saw, I was saying, you saw Matt Hutter leaving pit road there, and if you're saying, boy, he got out of there pretty quickly. NASCAR just said, boy, he got out there pretty quickly. <laughs> Bring him back in for a stop and go penalty. Uh, a little too quick leaving the pit lane. So the Stanley between machine will be coming uh, back in for a stop and go penalty here on lap number 64. I was going to say, I'm glad to see the 74 car leading because that kind of secures the jobs of all five of us working today's broadcast. Last Saturday night, I went to Riverside Park Speedway in Agawa, Massachusetts, and during the Bush North qualifying, I thought I heard a very familiar voice announcing at Riverside Park Speedway. And the more I listened to it, the more it sounded like Steve Bird, crew chief for this car. It was. Really? Birdie, yes, Birdie announced qualifying for Bush North. And it turns out, I was not aware of this, but it turns out Birdie had been an announcer for a couple of years working Hudson and Fines. But now this car is leading, our jobs are secure. Steve Bird's going to stay there turning wrenches. Good. Randy LaJoy is leading, hasn't led since Dover, September of last year, which was 14 races ago. Stop and go penalty now successfully completed, and Matt Hutter back on the okay, racetrack. Okay, you're clear, go. We you told you before that Hunter did not have the uh, easiest weekend. This is what happened to him yesterday in his qualifying session here in the afternoon. You can see fluids coming out from under the car, getting under the rear wheels hard into the wall. The back of the car was really damaged. And now we've got caution on the speedway. There is the 89, John Preston. He brings out the caution. So John Preston. Spinning in turn number two, and this is the second caution flag of the day. It'll fly at lap number 67. Interesting story. That is the car normally driven by Stanton Barrett. It was not on the original schedule to be run up here. Then Preston, who was a local driver from up in the Northeast, said he wanted to run, so a deal was made, and then at that point, Stanton Barrett was available because he wasn't supposed to run here. And then when Jimmy Foster was still recovering, that's what allowed Stanton to get into the 50 car. So a bit of a trickle-down effect there if you're curious as to why Preston is in the 89. That was an add-on race. Uh, they weren't originally planning to be here. Uh -oh. I'm, seeing, I'm seeing smoke coming out of Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s car there. You can see it trailing from the back of the car. Oh, uh, it's the right, right front. front. In stereo, Matt Yoakum. You guys are indeed correct. Great minds think alike, I guess. He's got a rub on the right front. They're going to pull that out on the pit stop. And as you remember, I said, Tony Yuri Sr. has come out of retirement. You can see a picture of him getting ready as a three car hits his box. They're going to free the car up with a little bit of air pressure adjustment. His car was a little tight in traffic. Let's go down to Glen Chair. And Randy LaJoy has brought the uh, Phoenix Chevrolet in. They're they've already changed the right sides. They're on the left sides now. Uh, behind him is his teammate, Tim Fidoa, also four times in front of him, Elliot Sadler. Uh, a little bit of trouble on the left side, but LaJoy is down and away. He will keep the lead. Joe Bessie is in the pits with four tires and fuel. Also in a, a wedge adjustment. I told you he had a slight problem with the push coming off. So uh, no changes on Randy LaJoy. Good pit stop. He did keep the lead. There's Tim Fidoa, 26 cars on the lead lap, the last car being Dick Trickle. Everybody's been on the pit road for service, and now those who are a lap or more down will be coming in for their pit stop as well. Caution, second time today after John Preston spins in turn two. We're coming right back. We are getting set to go back to green after this quick caution period number of changes in the running order but not near the very front where Randy LaJoy leads him back to the straight. Weaving their way through traffic. Bessie gets through in second. Third place Elton Sawyer gets caught up in traffic. Elliot Sadler restarted in fourth. Robert Presley fifth. Mike McLaughlin in sixth. Tony Stewart restarted seventh. Dale Earnhardt Jr. in eighth. 
Casey Atwood, buddy, all the way back to ninth during that pitch stop. Well, Dennis Adcox and those do a great, great job, but you need to run every week, and Casey and those guys show up every now and then uh, to run because they don't have a sponsor. Somebody out there, if you have got some money, you can use it better. This is a great talent, and I tell you, they're doing it every week, and Pittsburgh's really good, good at it. If you don't do it every week, that's what happens. Around the 36 of Matt Hutter, who is a lap machine. There goes Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the three around the 14 of Patty Moise. And now for the lead, can Bessie get there? If you're just joining us, Joe Bessie led the first 59 laps. Oh, he's going to make it in the middle part of the corner. He pulled all the way up on Randy LeJoy, but Randy gets a great run back off turn two. But it looks like right now cold tires that the sixth car, Joe Bessie, is a little bit quicker than LaJoy. And Elton Sawyer is closed in right behind there in the 38. Elton's having a big day today. He yeah. really is. He looked so good at Bristol until at the tail end he got problems with the engine, lost a cylinder. It's the same car he ran at Bristol. Ran so well there. Here we go. For the lead. Bessie got him lap 73. Randy the George car just absolutely would not turn in the center part of the corner. He's just out. Here comes Elton Sawyer on the side to take over second. And just, I tell you, when you have a little bit of push problem like that, you can see him dropping back right now. Elliot Sadler right behind him coming, and Robert Presley in the 59. Good battle right there. That's a great race. And again, Elton Sawyer, four times here, two top fives, and a sixth in that mix. But you know, wouldn't he like to win one of these things? 270 career starts. He has won just a single race. Myrtle Beach in 94, 90 races ago. Watching all of this with us here in the booth at New Hampshire International Speedway is the Honorable Governor of the state of New Hampshire, Governor Gene Shaheen. Great to see you here again. Well, it's nice to be here. This is one of the great attractions in New Hampshire. I remember when you and I visited last year, I believe it was, we were talking so much about the fact that you were really one of the few governors in this area, which I found interesting, to really stress tourism as part of uh, your platform and, and, and something you really take very seriously. Well, absolutely. In fact, we've got a whole group of tour operators here today from Great Britain and Germany, and this is one of the stops on their tour. We're trying to encourage more visitors from Europe and Tourism is the second largest industry in the state, so we love those folks who come in from out of state to visit us. One thing I'll tell you, too, the guys around here, the, uh, the law enforcement agencies and so on, they have done just a wonderful job in this decade of uh, getting the traffic now flowing so well. I was a bit of a bugaboo when first it came was, here back in 1990. Now it's so easy to come and go, and they've really done a lot of good work up here. Well, that's nice to hear. I think they've really worked hard at it. Um, all the state officials tried to work with the, the local folks here in Loudoun to make sure that traffic runs smooth and that law enforcement is cooperative. There you see Elliot Sadler making a move around Elton Sawyer. See, Randy LaJoy had gotten that position back. There goes Robert Presley in the 59. I'll tell you, buddy, get out of line at least a little bit. These guys are on you. I was just looking at Randy LaJoy. You're exactly right. That's what's happening. But Randy LaJoy, as soon as he gets a little bit of heat in the tires, he can turn in the center part of the corner. Here he comes. Uh, Joe Bessie knows it, too. I guarantee you he's looking in the mirror. But Elliot Sadler is there, moving very, very well. Every week he seems to be in contention. Elliot's had a busy week. He tested at Pikes Peak International Raceway in Colorado Springs earlier this week. The NASCAR Bush Series goes there in early June. Governor Gene Shaheen, great to see you, and I certainly look forward to seeing you when the NASCAR Winston Cup teams come to town here in, in a month or so, and uh, we love coming up to this state. Uh, the Granite State and all the people up here, just wonderful to visit with. Well, thanks. It's uh, great to see you again, and we love having you here and look forward to your coming back. Take care. Thank you, Governor. Thank you. Governor Gene Shaheen, Democratic Governor of the state of New Hampshire. That is Joe Bessie, the pride of Scarborough, Maine, just up the road of peace. And there are the numbers nearing halfway. 
speaking of making a move, look at the 74 of Randy LaJoy. He's catching Joe Bassey almost to car length a lap. Now he we, I mean, he is flying around this racetrack. Elliot Sadler has pulled right on his back bumper. We got a great race going today. The guy who's lost in that exchange is Elton Sawyer, who has now backslid to four seconds behind the pack that he was running in the middle of just a few moments ago. So he's really gone backwards. He's just not running nearly as well as he was a while ago. But these two guys are running great, and they have been running great all day long. Class of the field right there. Bumper cam will give you a little excitement there if we had it. <laughs> I'm telling you. Caution is on the speedway. Turn two, there's a problem. There's a problem. Patty Moise and Mike Cope are the involved cars. Moise in the 14, Cope in the 30. And yep. caution for the third time. Tremendous amount of damage there to Mike Cope's car. That's him in the red car, and that's Patty Marwise in the white car pulling away there. Tremendous amount of damage. I know the radiator's gone in that car. And now fortunes can change. That is the car that won the race here last year. Mike Cope's number 30. Patty Moise. That car owned by Michael Waltrip's wife, Buffy, Elizabeth Waltrip, listed as the uh, owner on the number 14. Caution at lap number 87. Oh. Mm -hmm. I don't think she has any brakes. That may have been a comment. I was going to say. <laughs> hey, well, I was being might, nice, guys. There might be no. There may be no brakes. Or that might have been an editorial. <laughs> Elton Sawyer. Let's wait and see here. Uh, no. Yeah. Oh. Again, obviously a lot of carnage. And uh, Patty has driven on towards the garage stall. So Patty Moise right there. And the good news is with all that damage, good news that they were both able to drive away. Elton Sawyer has pitted. The hood is up on that car. He had been in contention earlier today. Trickle is in the pits as well in the 38. Here comes 77 at Barrier. Phil Parsons is in. These stops at lap number 88. Glenn Jarrett's down on pit road watching. Yeah, you lie there's that back kiss that come in. We told you it was very tight. They came in a while ago and made some adjustments. Matt said the car was even worse. They brought him in this time. They put three rounds in the right rear, two out of the left rear, and went three up on the track bar, and they've also got some spring rubbers. In a little bit, I'm going to show you some of this stuff, talk about the ways that they adjust this car. But Matt Kenseth's car is probably as tight as he's ever had it, and they just cannot get it loosened up. These pit stops now for some taking place, lap number 89. Well, if it's still if it's still pushing now, they can take it out in the woods and shoot it. I'm telling you, that's a major change on that car. Let's see if we can tell from Matt Kenseth's car what happened between Cope. Now, nah, tough to tell through the smoke. Stay down low. We're clear, boys. We're clear. Couldn't tell through the smoke what happened between uh, Cope and Patty Moise. Just looked like front to rear contact with a whole bunch of cars running together and who hit who first is one of those things that be tough to analyze at this point. Lap 89 here at New Hampshire International Speedway live on TNN Motorsports. Joe Bessie leads Randy LaJoy. Kevin LePage under caution. Caution for the third time this afternoon. Patty Moise and Mike Cope involved in an accident out in turn two. There's Patty's car still being driven through the pit area, actually where you saw the car turn in before she went towards the Bush North Series garage. And there is really no access from one to the other. There is foot access, but not driving. So now she's back on the area behind pit road and heading to what is today the Bush Series garage. It's the Winston Cup garage when those fellas race here twice a year on the pit lane Elton Sawyer's been in moments ago at barrier back in for a second time Matt Yoakum is on the pit lane and he's been uh, snooping around the Dale Earnhardt Jr. pit and a lot of activity going on there what's the story Matt Eli something amiss under the hood of Dale Jr. it appears something is wrong with the carburetor either has low throttle or full throttle 
So right now they're discussing whether to bring him in, try to change it. They're going to try to soldier on at the moment, but in one of the later cautions, they may have to change his carburetor because he is definitely losing track position. Glenn Jarrett. Hey, Matt, thanks. You know, I told you a while ago about some of the things that Matt Kenseth was facing with a tight race car. Let me show you real quickly some of the ways they adjust these cars during the race. The easiest way, change air pressure in the tires. That's the quick way. The other way, they might take a wrench like this and adjust the jack screw, change the tension on a spring. Or, if it's really bad, they may adjust the track bar with a wrench like this. One of the other things they do, they may take a rubber. This is a half rubber. They may take one of these uh, out of the uh, right front to soften it up to make the car turn a little better. They might cut this in two or put a hole or a half rubber in the right rear to tighten that up. If none of that stuff works, if it's a really bad push, they take this hammer and, <laughs> whack, and they whack the crew chief for making the car that tight to begin with. Ah, <laughs> oh, oh, good to uh, uh, That's Glenn Jarrett. And there is the crew chief looking on. Actually, the team owner. Robbie Reiser, who owns the uh, number 17 team. 92 laps on the board right now. Eight laps shy of halfway in the gum out 200 for the NASCAR Bush Series here in New Hampshire. <laughs> Lap into the restart now with Joe Bessie continuing as the race leader. He got around Jason the Jet Jarrett and kept him down the lap, but he was in arrears. And now Jared actually the bumper car between the leader Bessie and the second place runner Randy LaJoy. 88 Kevin Schwantz on the lead lap but 66 Elliot Sadler is. 59 Robert Presley is. He's running in fourth. And the 44 Tony Stewart now running in fifth. Tony Stewart has really picked the intensity up. He is driving down in the corner about five times as hard as he was at the first part of the race. Very, very uh, fast getting into the corner. I look for him to be up front in just a few laps. That's the Hickory car for the 44 Tony Stewart. Crew Chief uh, Brian Frazier and uh, Tony tested for three days last week at Richmond International Raceway in Virginia, the Sawyer's beautiful racetrack. And they got everything ironed out and ready to come up here. Again, he's had tons of laps in the IRL, the Indy Racing League car up here. But not until this weekend has he been in a NASCAR Bush Series machine on this racetrack. There you see our friends at MCI bringing you NASCAR timing and scoring. Whoa, Casey Atwood in the 28 there. He lies all the way down on the flat part of the racetrack in the center part of the corner. It probably cost him momentum down the straightaway as you see the uh, feed walk car get by in the 33 there. There you see seventh place swapping around with that MCI scoring rundown. Our friends at MCI remind you about 10, 3, 2, 1. Just dial it and save up to 50%. Vito in the number 33, his birthday today. Get well, Bill, on the back is for his car owner, Bill Bumgarner. You know, I told you at the top of the broadcast, just coming back from some surgery. Going to be okay. Well, that's a good thing. He's one of the real nice guys really in the garage. Is. Bill Bumgarner is somebody just everybody really, really likes, and everybody's pulling for you, Bill. Working our way towards halfway. Mother Nature has held off her onslaught. Mother Nature wouldn't mess around with the governor here. No. <laughs> Going to get the race in with the governor here. Exactly right. I wouldn't have given you a plug nickels chance though watching the, the weather guesser yesterday. Or coming to the racetrack this morning when yeah, there was, it was rain raining. on the windshield. Yeah. Guys, look at this. I'm telling you, that's Jason Jarrett on the outside there, Robert Presley and these guys. It was about three wide going down the front straightaway, and everybody had to adjust to get through the corner there. Had they not, it would have been a problem. Now, if you're curious and you're looking closely, you say that's a Ford that Jason Jarrett is driving, and you say to yourself, gee, I thought when he was driving it was going to be a Chevy, and when Dale Jarrett was driving it was going to be a Ford, well, it was a Chevy. Except in qualifying yesterday, Jason wrecked the primary car and the backup. Oh, oh we and have there he gets tagged by Casey Atwood. Atwood then goes around as he is hit by the 82 of Mark McFarland. There goes the spinning Santerre. Caution is on the speedway. Turn one, the problems lap 100. We're halfway here in New Hampshire. There was the 82 of Mark McFarland who really had absolutely nowhere to go. There is the Chevy that looks very much, unfortunately, like 
the Ford looked yesterday. Casey Atwood thought he had the Boy, spot is... going in the corner, and he got into the left corner there of Jason Jarrett, and that started this melee. Or I should say that was the Ford looking like the Chevy did yesterday. Here it is again. Watch what happens going into turn one. See Casey Atwood on the bottom. Jason Jarrett starts across the racetrack. They make contact right there, and the cars behind them just have absolutely nowhere to go. You see going by there on the bottom, Jason Keller in 57 made it through. The low line got through. The other guys, wow. Meanwhile, there's Jason Jarrett getting out of his car that's on fire. Another car right there, the 82 McFarland, showing a good bit of flame. And he is unhooking from his car. He's the late model stock car driver, McFarland is, from the old Dominion Speedway in Manassas, Virginia. And as you can see, he's okay. Plans to run five NASCAR Bush Series races this year. This is the biggest track, the fastest track he'd ever run on. That's also one of Earnhardt's cars from last year. So, mm. wow, I'm telling you. Meanwhile, there's Jarrett. You see, walking okay into the ambulance. Matt Yoakum is caught up with Mike Cope, meanwhile, who was involved with Patty Moise in that accident on lap 82. Matt? Eli, Mike Cope, awfully disappointed. The good news, he's okay. Mike, what happened? Well, I got uh, off in there behind the lap car, the 14, and uh, we just got into, into the back of us a little bit, just got my momentum. I was carrying a little bit more than she was, and she checked up, I checked up, and evidently the cars behind us uh, didn't get the hint, and they didn't check up, and uh, just a bad day for the Slim Jim car. It uh, knocked the front clip off of it. It's been an all too familiar sight for us of late, but uh, things are gonna turn around. We're running a little bit better today. Uh, come in, made our stops. Got the car adjusted and was, you know, we're running pretty decent. Didn't have a car to win, but had a car to get us into the top 15, but won't be today. Well, the good news is he's okay. The bad news, they wanted to take this car to Nazareth. It was three tenths of a second faster than their Nazareth car during a test. The bad news, it looks like they're gonna have to run that Nazareth car after all. Tough, tough story there. The hood has been up and down. They're putting the hood pins back in on Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s car. Again, we told you about the problems he was having just a short while ago. 102 laps on the board. Joe Bessie leads and stays on the track. Just, to, just a bit, and the power team fans, Joe Bessie, who is our race leader here at New Hampshire International Speedway. And there is Joe. Interesting, as we broke away, we mentioned that everybody else, with the exception of Robert Presley, pitted at lap 102 or 103. Joe Bessie, our race leader, did not make that pit stop. Interesting. Wonder what the strategies are. We'll find out about that in just a moment or so. There's Dale Earnhardt Jr. He lost a lap moments ago, guys, and here he's coming in again. Casey Atwood's also in the pit area. Picking the hood up on Glenn his Jarrett. car. Yeah, Glenn, why don't you pick up the story first? Okay, guys, uh, I talked with uh, Joe Bessie's crew, and uh, they think it's going to rain. There's a little bit of rain spitting. They think that... Uh, that the rains may come and they didn't want to take a chance of giving up the lead. Now we said that it, nearly everybody else pitted uh, and Joe didn't, but the guy who, who may come out uh, ahead of this uh, best of all is Andy Sam pitted to the lap before. And so he gained a lot of positions because Elliot's guys came in after he did. So uh, it's going to be what, but the best he's waiting on the rain. That was Glenn Charis. And the gist of his report about the impending rain, again, we've been talking about it since we signed on. The weatherman said 70% chance today. Watch this again. 28 Atwood, 32 Jason Jarrett. Two of the youngest drivers in the field. You see Jarrett coming down. Casey got into the left rear corner and behind him, everybody's in big trouble. And with more experience, that would not have happened for either driver. But uh, that's one of the things you have to learn is where everybody is on the racetrack. And how to pace yourself going into the corner so that does not happen. And there is Dennis Adcock and the rest of the crew working on Casey Atwood's number 28. He'd seen this track on television. He'd never been here. He said, boy, this is the smoothest, nicest track I've ever run on. It's also the fastest track he's ever run on. He's pretty well convinced he's never gone as fast in a race car as he has this weekend. There's Mark McFarland's car. Matt, a lot of uh, fellas seeing their cars going to the garage looking like that. Another guy to go behind the wall, Tracy Leslie. They believe they have a possible broken transmission. They're going to look that over. Also, trouble in the 38 car. He's got carburetor problems as well. His thing will only go to 4,000 RPM. 
So they're going to look at bringing that car in as well. So that's the update from Matt Yoakum down on the pit lane. Quick reminder, if you are into video games, you've probably heard what the critics are saying about TNN Motorsports video game, Hardcore 4x4 for the Sony PlayStation and the Sega Saturn system. They say if you're a racer and you like games, check out TNN Motorsports Hardcore 4x4. One reviewer said the game gets so real, you have to scrape the mud off your television. So for more information about TNN Motorsports Hardcore 4x4, just check out our website at country.com and we'll give you all the information now you can get that for yourself well there's joe bessie who says my bunions and my rheumatiz say it's gonna rain i'm not gonna pick <laughs> we'll be right back <laughs> back to work lap 111 of 200 here at new hampshire international speedway the leader is bessie Right behind him, the 59, Robert Presley, both men electing not to make a pit stop. You know, I've been visiting these parts for many years, Dick Bergman, and I always hear the locals say, if you don't like the New England weather, wait 10 minutes. It's bound to change. This is a gutsy call by Bessie's team, hedging on rain to come and not pitting because of it. It's a brave man who makes a way through all the New England weather, especially with the sky like this. We had a day last week where it was supposed to have been sunny and mild and gorgeous all day, and it rained all day. We were supposed to have had heavy rain by now this afternoon. We haven't had it. And maybe we'll get it. And maybe Joe Bessie and his crew chief, Harold Holly, will come out of here looking brilliant. Maybe they won't. We'll see. <laughs> Speaking of weather, this is a storm we're watching here. <laughs> Elton Sawyer and these guys have been bumping each other in the corner, trying to get by Blaze Alexander every way they can. Just in front of them there, you can see Parsons looking back from Parsons' car there. Elton Sawyer on the outside coming down the back straightaway. These guys have been bumper tagging each other all the way around the racetrack. There are still 22 cars on the lead lap. The last one is Ed Barrier. Quickly, Joe Bessie leads. Robert Presley second. Shane Hall is third. Kevin Grubb is fourth. Matt Kenseth is fifth. Phil Parsons runs in sixth. Seventh is Kevin LePage. Mark Green is eighth. Buckshot Jones is ninth. And Glenn Allen is tenth. Eleventh is Mike Dillon. Then you've got the 52 for Kevin Grubb. He's running 12th. Jeff Purvis is 13th. 14th is Tony Stewart. 15th, Andy Santer. Tim Fidua is 16th. Mike McLaughlin, 17th. Oh, I, I didn't mean to yell, but Tony yeah, Stewart right. put that car where it shouldn't be. You can see on the outside there, the 52 is really having a hard time getting back to going. They made big contact going into turn one. Everybody made it. Well, look at old Tony Stewart, though, just making the move now to the inside of Tim Fidua. That's for 16th spot. Further back, Elliot Sadler is 18th, LaJoy is 19th, Jason Keller is 20th, Dick Trickle 21st, and Ed Barrier 22nd. Those 22 cars remaining on the lead lap. This is the race back through the pack again for the cars that had pitted, and Tony Stewart was one of those. Last caution flag, he came in, made his pit stop, now he's got to get through the traffic again. Jeez, he's try three wide. Oh, oh yes, yeah. oh, three wide. Oh boy. Vidua grabs 13th in that exchange from Stewart. Meanwhile, Jason Majek Jarrett done for the day. His Ford not able to return. Let's get an update from the garage. Well, Eli, Jason has walked out of the infield care center. Jason, a wild ride. You're okay. What happened? Um, I don't really know. I thought I gave the 28 car enough room, and uh, I guess he needed to take more. But uh, you know, that's just how our luck's been here in New Hampshire. And, but definitely a weekend to forget for Jason Jarrett. Yeah, definitely so. Again, yesterday uh, losing the Chevy in qualifying and now uh, wrecking the Ford during this come out 200. We're at lap 116 of 200. And folks, remember, the NASCAR Bush North Series runs a 100-lapper. When this race is done, and of course, we'll have it for you right here on TNN Motorsports. Fidoa and Stewart. 12th and 13th, respectively. Jeff Purvis, the Lance Snacks machine. Mike Dillon, the 72 car. They are 11th and 12th. Purvis and Dillon are. 
39, Glenn Allen Jr. around Kevin Schwantz. Schwantz not on the lead lap. Glenn Allen is running in ninth. And these cars you're looking at here, they made pit stops. That's the reason they're off a little bit as far as track position right now. The uh, blue and white car there, that's McLaughlin last year's winner, 66 there. Elliot Sadler and just behind him, Randy LaJoy. They're fighting their way back through heavy traffic, trying to get good track position and put themselves back in a chance to win this race. Up front, those who didn't pick, Joe Bessie has three tenths of a second on Robert Presley. Presley has now two seconds on Shane Hall. And this is where experience is ever so important. The young kids that are really not all that many laps on the racetrack, they would have a tough time doing what these three guys are doing now, weaving their way through traffic and getting through with the fenders all of the car. Uh-oh! Trouble Schwartz. right there, Kevin Schwanz. Caution on the speedway. Lap 120. Even though he's able to continue, the yellow is already flying. And Joe Bessie will lead them back to the stripe. Again, Kevin Schwantz, who raced here in motorcycles back in 1987 in the old Loudon Classic Superbike Division. Loops it around there. It used to be part of the Riddling Motorsports team, buddy, and now it's uh, Kevin Schwantz's own operation. You know, Kevin Schwantz is doing a great job this year, but you have to ask yourself a question. Will Joe Bessie and these guys that did not take advantage of that caution a while ago come in now? If they do, the other guys will really have a lot of track position on them. I'm also curious to see whether Matt Hutter comes in, even though Matt's running four laps down already. He was all over the racetrack the last lap or so. I'm curious as to whether he might have uh, cut a tire down. Watch Schwantz. No, he got tagged getting in the corner there. Yep, the 52 got a piece of him, Kevin Grubb. Just a scuff up. And here come the leaders down pit road, buddy. So your question being answered here. Lap 122. We'll see Bessie and Presley make their stops. Glenn Jarrett. And I'm waiting just like the crew is, guys, on Joe Bessie to come in in the power team Chevy. Here he is. This will be a four-tire change. Now, buddy, you made, I think you made mention a while ago, maybe it was Dick, that, uh, you know, maybe if he catches a caution later on, he will have fresher tires than most everybody else. Of course, Robert Presley, uh, Mark Green just now pulling in. Uh, those guys will also have fresh tires, but they've got to use up some of that fresh rubber getting back up through the pack. But Joe Bessie got the break he needed, got the caution, so uh, they could not make it. His four tires are down or on. He's down in a way he beats everybody else out he's got the fuel to go the rest of the way and four fresh tires to do it on and he'll check back in line somewhere around 20th place now once those who are on the racetrack go by indeed Matt Hunter has come onto the pit lane as we had guessed uh, for those of you who are keeping up with that young driver they did uh, think they had a tire problem and uh, they're checking things speaking of tires Goodyear brought a uh, harder tire here there you see Hunter going back onto the racetrack a uh, bit of a harder tire than they've run here in the past. It was the uh, Bush Series tire from Homestead, the Winston Cup tire from Phoenix. Just about one step up on the hardness of what these teams have run in the past. 122 laps. We're coming right back. What's for lunch? Cranberry and jelly. Ham and cheese. Another day. Good morning, boys. How are you? Good morning, Mr. Oh, the third car in line, number 85, the Big A Auto Parts entry, is leading for the first time since June of a year ago at the South Boston Speedway in Virginia. Second is the 17, Matt Kenseth. Phil Parsons in the 10 is running third. Kevin LePage in the 40 is fourth. And the double zero is Buckshot Jones. He runs fifth. It's going to be a day Hall is going to remember, isn't it? Picked up a sponsor, started out at this race, and here he is in the lead. That's a good point. That is not the Andretti Racing Team's car. That is one of Shane Hall's own cars, and uh, the sponsorship is just for a little while here until Andretti and them figure out what they're going to do. There you see how some of the top teams made their stops, and obviously some who did not make stops picked up positions as a result. And the two cars that are in front of that blue and red car Hall is driving are laps down. Well, actually, at this moment now, Dale Earnhardt Jr., the three is on the tail end of the lead lap. But you're right, the 38 is now the tail end of one lap down. Elton Sawyer almost two laps down. But uh, Dale Jr. is now on the tail end of the lead lap. So if he catches a caution here, 
he'd be able to come all the way around. Meanwhile, look at the scramble. Seventh place on back. Mike Gilman, seventh. Tony Stewart, the 44 and eight. Tim Fidua. Running behind him. Tim's going salmon fishing up in Maine when this race is over before heading on to Nazareth, Pennsylvania for the next stop. 126 laps on the board. 200 make up the distance. You see that darker area in the corners. If you were with us last year, you might remember that the Bayer family repaved the turns here at New Hampshire International. That darker area, that's that rock and asphalt that they brought in from Trinidad to really withstand the pressures of NASCAR racing. I knew that. I know you did. Yeah, I read the article just like you did. Exactly right. <laughs> 72 Dillon. Let's see if Stewart can make a move on him there for a seventh spot. As you said, here comes Stewart on the inside. Dillon sees him and does not put up any defense getting him in the corner there. Fedewa has the inside line, too. He'll try to make the pass coming off turn four. Tracy Leslie is back on the track, 25 laps down. If you're following the ups and downs of that Lysol car in his 190th career NASCAR Bush Series start today, Tracy Leslie. There's the leader, Shane Hall. Matt Kenseth right behind him. Then the lap machine of E.C. Atwood. Glenn Jarrett, like the rest of us, just watching the story unfold. Hey, guys, you know, it's pretty amazing. Evidently, that hammer worked on Robbie Riser because uh, that car was almost a lap down. In fact, when the first caution came out, Randy LaJoy was under Kenseth to put him a lap down. But Matt beat him back to the last stage lead lap, and now he's hanging up in the top five. They're running second. That's, uh, that's pretty amazing. Uh, he got knocked out of the green there by Casey Atwood, but uh, that's still a pretty amazing story. The car, however, is still real tight, so uh, the hammer is still standing by. <laughs> You're looking at Mike Chuck Jones in the double zero there. Moved all the way up and, and has a very, very competitive car. Got caught up in the first wreck of the day right on the front straightaway here. Has made a tremendous comeback. Lap 130, as you see, 70 remaining. Riding with Kevin LePage. He's in fourth. They're in the He's channel lock. The they give him the word. And indeed, he does Goodbye. have the to... Glenn Allen Jr. tried to follow through there. Couldn't quite make the move in the corner. Coming through it on Colton Neal. Okay, so I'm doing all I can, all right? Yeah, 10 more. Just advising you. You're listening to John Munson, who is conversing with the 99 of Glenn Allen Jr. Exactly right. He's doing all he can as he makes a move on Kenseth down in the turn three. Side. Ooh. Well, getting close. This is for fourth. And Purvis in the four is in the mix also. That's fourth, fifth, sixth. Stewart right behind them at seven. McLaughlin, the 34, that white car in the middle, he's an eight. Elliott, Sander, ninth, all those guys battling for position. Well, we're getting down to it now. We've had what is almost certainly the last pit stop, so any position you can take now, if you can hang on to it, that's yours at the end of the race. You there you see the 85, Shane Hall, the double zero, Buckshot Jones. They are first and second. Going around, Casey Atwood. To go by Casey yeah. They made a little contact getting into turn one there, and Buckshot had to check up just a little bit, or those two cars have been in trouble. If you're curious about Shane Hall there in the big A number 85, this is only the second NASCAR Bush Series race he has led in his 54 career starts. You can see the damage on the front of Casey Atwood's car there, held together by gray tape and a bunch of bungee cords and different things. That affects a car on the major speedways, but on a mile racetrack like this, where the speeds are somewhere around 150 miles an hour, you can see it has absolutely nothing to do with the performance. Well, Buckshot running in second spot in that double zero is having a good day. You know, he has really matured as a race driver. He seems to have escaped the era where the car was always in the garage before the race was all done and over with, and the car was all bent up. He's doing what he has to do. He's leading laps, 
so far. There's nobody in this race who's really led many more laps than he has all year. The car is full when he gets done with the race, and he's running up front. This guy is absolutely destined to win and win soon. Casey Atwood is fighting so very hard to get back in the lead lap. He knows he has a very quick car, as you can see, but he needs to get by Shane Hall to get back in the lead lap. Oh, boy. Uh -oh. <laughs> yeah, Casey now. got a little impatient. Again, 85 is the leader. 28 is not on the lead lap. The double zero is running in second. They'll go around the 43, having just come off the pit lane, Stevie Reeves. Well, they wondered if this kid Atwood was going to be any good if you got him away from his home track of Nashville. The answer is in. Yes. Very, let's, talk very good. A, let's talk a little bit about Kevin LePage there in the 40. He's moved himself into the top four now and running very, very well in the Channel Lock car. You can see you're riding with him off turn four and down the front straightaway. He's a favorite up here from Shelburne, Vermont. He's a texture inside when you get to the corner. Listening to Kevin LePage's radio. You want to do it. That's don't his want to wife. get caught outside because it's a big line back there. Donna giving him the who's where. <laughs> and there's that line of traffic behind him that uh, we were hearing about on the radio. How many guys would want to have their wife up on the roof as the spotter talking to him in their headset as they run a race car? But he does, and it works. Saw a buck shot finally get around Casey Atwood there, buddy. Yeah, he got a good run off turn four, got on the inside of Casey Atwood, and Casey realizes this is for the lead of the race right here. He moved over very smartly and let him go. Atwood is in 24th, the lap down now. From the leader, 85, look where the three is. There's Dale Earnhardt Jr. Remember when he got on the tail end of the lead lap? And now he's just pulling away. He's got clear sailing, clear track ahead of him. Boy, a caution flag could change this right around. Here and here's the lead. Buckshot Jones got it. Brings Atwood with him, who still stays a lap down. But Buckshot Jones grabs the lead in lap 139 from Shane Hall. And Kevin LePage comes along. You can see Shane Hall got pushed out wide there, has not recovered from it. He's dropping back. And Glenn Allen Jr. is by. And Purvis in the four goes by. And we saw Tony Stewart Patsy going on the by. outside if they want the spot. Also, Joe Bessie got by Randy LaJoy. So Bessie is now an eighth, and LaJoy is a ninth. There they are. And look who's still going back, the 85 Shane Hall. Still oh. hasn't gotten in line. That's what Donna LePage was talking about. She said, don't get on the outside. Get on the outside. There's a whole line that's going to come by you. And she was right. trying to protect ninth spot from Shane Hall. You've got Mike McLaughlin right behind as well. He'll try and protect 10th, and he's closing it tight. Here you have the Justin Boots entry. <laughs> Jason Keller, he'll try and protect 11th. Yeah, Shane Hall says, if I ever get back on the bottom of this racetrack, I'm, I'm never leaving. Never here. going back up here again. He's down now. lost so much he's gone from first to 12th in the shuffle but a Hampshire International Speedway shuffle to the back Robert Presley of the 59 he's had such a good day today Andy Santer of course one of the regulars up here in Bush North racing and he told us about track strategy here you don't want to get hung out on the outside. I've done that a few times, trying to pass someone on the outside. It's, it's a tough place to get around here. The track is real flat, and the corners are, are pretty fast, so the bottom is definitely the place to be. And that's exactly what we've been talking about. It comes right there from a fellow who has more laps on this track, 2,400 of them in competition. And you can't practice and test it. You've probably got 3,000-plus miles on this racetrack, Andy Santer. But that is the race leader. The pride of the University of Georgia, Buckshot Jones. He always runs well on TNN Motorsports. We're coming right back. His Monte Carlo looked like a Monte Carlo. Regretfully, it now looks like a, a pacer. Mm. 
That is remarkable, folks. He led 107 laps today. We are obviously under caution at lap 145. Joe Bessie and Elliot Sadler spun off turn number two. And there you see leading 107 laps today. Early in the day, clearly the class of the field. There's the other car who was involved, Elliot Sadler. Look at the uh, offset there. Yeah, you can see the rear housing knocked completely around sideways on that car, and the right front knocked around too. Meanwhile, at the other end of the racetrack, this is Shane Hall. This was not the first. This is not the reason for the caution. Shane got tagged by Robert Presley right there, did the full 360, and continued on. There was no caution because of that. He got it rolled down and brought the big A car back to the pit lane. But at that very same moment, at the other end of the racetrack, there was the Joe Bessie. Elliot Sadler spin. You can see Joe got into the back of Elliot Sadler just a little bit, putting both of these cars out of control and into the outside. You see Sadler really spinning the wheels there to keep it off the wall. And right there, he makes big contact with the right front. It was a good strategy, though, instead of using the brakes, wasn't it? Just bury the throttle. Now, you talked about aerodynamics not being a huge factor, but what happens when you have no rear spoiler? Well, he, if he goes back at all, he's for the ride. But you can see the car is really twisted and everything. I mean, right now, he's trying to evaluate whether he has any reason to be out there. I he's say coming no. back onto the racetrack uh, pit road again. That lap enough right there to scare him to the garage area. And there, you're indeed right, buddy. There was no way. That's too bad. Joe Bessie, just a nice guy, popular guy up here. Just wasn't going to work for him. It's uh, six too races bad. in a row he's crashed, and he has got to wonder about the fates and what they have done to him. Field getting the one to go signal. Chance for us to remind you that May 23rd here on TNN Motorsports, the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series heading to that tough high bank half mile, the I 70 Speedway in Odessa, Missouri, outside of Kansas City. Tony Raines will try and defend the 1997 win, the Yellow Freight 200. That is Saturday, May 23rd, 4 p.m. Eastern, right here on TNN Motorsports. And remember, folks, next Saturday, as part of TNN's sports coverage for you, the Winston. NASCAR's all-star race from the Charlotte Motor Speedway. We'll have it for you. The race itself at 7.30. We've got coverage starting at 7 o'clock with three race activities. Hope you can join us one week from tonight. That's going to be a good one. Meanwhile, Buckshot Jones leads. Green is in the air. Boy, Casey Atwood got a great jump there in the white car. Getting back in the lead lap as they head down in turn one. You can see Kevin LePage now in second place just behind Buckshot Jones there. I tell you, these guys are going at it. Now, remember on that caution, Dale Earnhardt Jr. got his lap back. Elton Sawyer, though, still on the tail end of one lap down, the 38. But there are the lead machines. Buckshot Jones, LePage, the 44 is Tony Stewart. Super run for the 99, Glenn Allen Jr., Jeff Purvis, Mike McLaughlin, Randy LaJoy is seventh, Fidua is eighth. Good run for Kevin Grubb. He's in ninth, and Jason Keller tenth, and there goes the lead. Kevin LePage makes a great run off turn two as they head down the back straightaway. Couldn't quite make it on both sides as they head into turn three. The border war right there. Vermont past the driver from Sorry, Georgia. Four is coming at you hard. Look at Tony Stewart in the 44. As he got that car hooked up on the bottom part of the racetrack, we've been watching him all day, Dick. Yeah, and look at Buckshot trying to get down to the lower lane. He bad needs to get down there. He knows what's going to happen if he gets caught on the outside. It's not pretty. Whoa, that wasn't pretty. They made contact, and Buckshot got the best jump off the corner back into second place. What a job. He's from the outside. He got by Stewart again and got his position back. Buckshot's strong. Real strong. Yes, he is. For a little guy, he's tough today. I'll tell you, I'm curious, too, what Purvis might have. If he can get just a car length or two closer, he's always tough. Yeah, they said the car wasn't very good until yeah. the very last practice session. And uh, they just, Johnny Allen, the crew chief this morning, said they really don't know what they did because they threw so many different things at it. But in the last practice session, it came to them. They thought today maybe what they try to do is play the weather game. They didn't do that. Now they're playing the let's go fast game, and they're headed to the front. Well, you know Ken Squires jumping around. You see Kevin LePage there. He was a regular at Ken Squires track just up the road at Thunder Road up here. Right now, though, Buckshot Jones trying to take the lead. 
There goes Buckshot grabbing it right back. So Jones has the lead, but LePage leading for the first time ever in that channel lock car over the last few laps. Lap 152 and 153 were Kevin LePage's laps. Now Buckshot again will get credit at lap 154. Buckshot looks like he's got the best car in the place right now. They've got that thing dialed in. Ricky Pearson, the crew chief, has done a terrific job, not only on the car, but working with his driver as well, and making sure everything goes well, and here they are in the closing laps meeting. Remember when he won here on TNN Motorsports back in Milwaukee in July of 96, his only series win in 66 starts prior to today, this being his 67th event. Casey Atwood's caught by Buckshot Jones. He's back in the lead lap, but the way Buckshot's running right now, he's not going to be able to hold him off. Around Atwood. Done. Simple enough right there. Buckshot's gone a long ways since that 1966 win, or 1996 win. That was the only race he led all year. This is the fourth race he's led in 10 so far in 1998. That's back in the middle of the pack now around Phil Parsons in 17th. Ken Siff, Andy Santer, that's 17th, 18th, 19th, the 88th. Schwantz not in the mix. He's a couple of laps down in 26. talk much about Andy Santer today. Local favorite from Maine. I'd love to hear him get together and talk to some of the folks from North Carolina and see if they could understand each other. Well, he's watch, got the greatest main accent. Watch accent. it now. Watch oh, it. It does. Nothing wrong with that. He's got the greatest main accent. He really does. I can sit and listen Ooh. to him. They had to see that. Dylan trying to push his way around Kevin Schwantz. there for Dylan. Those are some of the numbers we were talking about earlier for Andy Santer. One of the reasons he thought he was going to have such a big day here in comparison to the rest of the season, this is his first year on the Bush Grand National Series. So most of the racetracks he goes to, he's pulling in there for the very first time. Only four tracks on this whole tour are tracks that he has ever seen before. And this one is the one he has the most experience with. He is having a good run today, Andy Santer. We're at lap 158 of 200. Just joining us, we have been slowed by five cautions. Mike McLaughlin there, last year's winner in the 34. You can see he and Randy LaJoy are trying to knife their way back to the front. LaJoy checking him out on the inside. McLaughlin looks like he has a great car, but right now he's mired up in traffic and can't make a run on the lead. Traffic, he's mired in the cars that are on the lead lap and racing him for position as well, which makes it even more difficult. 159 laps on the board of 200. Buckshot Jones leads with the Bush North Series drivers waiting to run next. Nick Bergren, Glenn Jarrett, Matt Yoakum, and Buckshot Jones, who is the race leader here at New Hampshire International Speedway. Right behind him, the 28, that is Casey Atwood, who is now on one lap down still. Hasn't yet gotten around Buckshot Jones, and nor is Buckshot for any reason moving over to let him by either. It's uh, been a pretty good battle. How much do you have to worry about a guy right now, buddy? Should he just say, all right, go and be done with him, or should he start using up the double zero a little bit to keep Casey behind him? Well, as you can see on long runs, Casey Atwood has a great race car. And he, he will not quit driving the wheels off the car. So if Buckshot can keep him a lap down with uh, very little effort, that's what he needs to do because this car is capable of winning. Meanwhile, moments ago, we saw a big accident. Joe Bessie now in the garage. Elliot Sadler's back on the racetrack, 15 laps down. Let's hear from Joe Bessie in the garage area. Eli Joe Besley, awfully dejected, but okay. Joe, what happened? Just uh, went down into turn one and I think there was a car spinning somewhere, but there was no caution. Three or four cars ahead of me checked up, moved up on the racetrack. I slipped down underneath Elliott and got about halfway up underneath him. I don't think he knew I was there. 
He came down coming off two, and I moved down to keep from getting into him and cut my left front up on the apron a little too much and just unloaded the car and, and uh, lost the car. Really disappointed. Uh, we had a great race car. Uh, really, the power, the, these power team boys have just worked diligently for the last six weeks fixing cars and giving me good race cars the following week. Uh, disappointed anybody that got collected up in that mess. I know what that feels like. And just We're just going to persevere through this thing and... Uh, we're going to be back in Nazareth with another good piece, and we're going to get through it. That's Joe Bessie. This is the fifth torn-up race car in six races for Joe. He's been another innocent victim. Boy, some bad luck. Somebody send him some good luck charms. Yeah, you can see a little of the damage there on Elliot Sadler's car, who was also involved in that accident. And what Joe was referring to was the spin. Remember, at the other end of the racetrack, at that point, Shane Hall had gone around. Maybe some of the spotters had told their drivers there was going to be a caution. But as we saw, he just did the full 360 and kept on going, and the yellow never came out. Maybe those guys did check up at the other end of the racetrack. So the people that just joined this, uh, if you look at Buckshot's car, it didn't start the race looking like this. He was involved in a wreck early part of the race, and you can see there was a lot of damage, but right now they have that car dialed back in, doing a great job. He was lucky he didn't lose a lap. Yeah. He stayed in contention all day. And now he seems to be the class of the field. He started 26th, Buckshot did. And watch it right now. There's second place LePage, Tony Stewart next in line. You know what your favorite driver's paint scheme looks like. You can pick him out as they come by. You know, listening to Joe Bessie about Persevere, I don't think there's anybody out here any more than Joe Bessie. The guy has been written off several times. And he just keeps coming back and coming back and coming back. And he will, he will come back and win a bunch more of these things. No, we reported earlier that uh, Earnhardt had lost a lap and then he got back in the lead lap. So you people out there that want to know where he's at, he worked his way all the way back up to 12th spot in the lead lap. But not with the carburetor he started the race with. They did change Earnhardt's carburetor on a pit stop. Buckshot Jones had power steering problems here last year that got him in a wreck. Today, he's just got power. Hero Shot Jones started 26th. Jeff Burton, when he won here in 92, started 23rd. So should Buckshot hang on, this would be the deepest in the field for a NASCAR Bush Series race winner. He's just going to skate right along there. Casey Atwood, no. Casey Atwood can't get his lap back either. And we are running out of time. 22 laps to go is all. Oh, he's got a fender up under Buckshot as they headed off turn two there. These two cars are very well pitted against each other right now. Two, two guys, you can take a picture of that shot because that's the future of our sport as far as Winston Cup. Later on, these two guys will make a big impression in that sport. And you know, the experience, yeah, there's some difference, but not that much. This is only Buckshot's third race here at New Hampshire. And very honestly, he's never done all that well. He's finished 21st and 41st. And last year, he had that power steering problem, got him to wreck. But uh, there you see the ongoing battle for second place, 40, Kevin LePage, 44, Tony Stewart. MCI timing and scoring across the top of the screen. They remind you, 10, 3, 2, 1. Just dial it and save up to 50%. He doesn't have enough to go around yet, so he's going to try to root you out if he can. Yeah, he probably will. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's exactly what he's going to do. That'd be your plan, Glenn, wouldn't it be? Oh, absolutely, and I'm watching LePage. <laughs> His car has gone away just a little bit. He's doing everything he can to keep those guys behind him and, if possible, above him. They cannot pass on the outside, so Kevin has kind of backed the field up a little bit there and let... Uh, uh, some other cars catch up. Glenn Allen, uh, Jeff Purvis, and also Randy LaJoy now has moved around Mike McLaughlin into sixth. And uh, those cars have all caught up, but uh, they're all just a little bit tight and they're having trouble making the pass. LePage doing a great job in that car of holding those guys off. Heck, he's never even finished in the lead lap here, Kevin LePage, over the years. Uh, I mean, the best he's ever done is ninth place in 1994, but never on the lead lap until today. You know, Doug Taylor and those guys work very, very hard on that race car, though. And it's a good race car. Don't We're not trying to make that impression. They're just doing a superb job today. And, and uh, Kevin LePage, everybody knows, he's done miracles with the car this year in Western Cup. So sure good driver, good team. In case you wonder how tough this series is, you look back at Tony Stewart and 
see the success that he has had. 1998, he's won in the Midgets at Phoenix. He's won in Silver Crown in Phoenix. He won the IRL race at Orlando. First and second in IndyCars. Leads the IndyCar points. Can't get a win in this series to save his soul. Thought he was going to win at Daytona. Really looked good at the tail end of Daytona. Turned to the Rockingham race here on yep. CNN when Matt Kenseth rooted him out of the way. Yeah, he was leading going into the third turn of the last lap. And couldn't get it. This one, though. Of course, if he stays right where he is, it'd still be his second top five of the year with that second place at Rockingham. Yep, running in third spot right now. Tony Stewart, number 44. Local hero, Kevin LePage, and the number 40 in front of him. Two-time number one. <laughs> Well, I had to throw that in there. Yeah, well, that's a tough race to win. Clear. Thing. She better talk fast. So Tony Stewart, you can see, taking a look on the inside as they head down the back straightaway in the turn three. Tony has inched his way in on Kevin LePage, less than a car length now as they go down in the be corner. Smart with lab traffic. We got a quick break to take. We'll come back to take you to the checkered flag and see whether Buckshot Jones can pick up career win number two. We're back on TNN in a moment. got his lap back earlier. He's now running a solid 10. He's 4.9 seconds behind the race leader. While you were away, Tony Stewart got that move around Kevin LePage, grabbed second spot. And here's how that pass happened going up into the corner. Eli, you can see a lap car there on the inside as Stewart gets the preferred inside line down the back straightaway. Once the page is on the outside, you see him. He knows he has to protect the bottom. He drops right back down below Stewart there, getting in the corner. Tony Stewart in second. The page third. Jeff Purvis in that orange and blue Lance machine. He's running in fourth. The joyous fifth Purvis was second at Daytona. But the best since then, his best since then, was 15th at Talladega. Now they've run well, they just haven't finished well. But their average finish, other than Talladega, 25th place. Eli, he and the 74 of Randy LaJoy just behind him there may be the two fastest cars on the racetrack yep. right now. He is flying up on the pace. It's going to really be tight for the pace to hold him off. Another story we need to remember is that the point leader, Matt Kenson, Although on the lead lap is running back in 16th place, and this is going to shuffle the NASCAR Bush Series points just a bit. It does, because I mean, Earnhardt was in third at the start of the race. He's worked his way back into a top 10 finish yeah. right now. So, uh, boy, this thing is really going to be tough all year long for a guy to keep the lead in the points. So getting the lead does not seem that tough, but keeping it, that's another story. That's second through fifth on the screen there. Being in on Kevin LePage. The leader, Buckshot Jones, is now three and six tenths seconds ahead of those machines. Hang on to that. This is the this is the twelfth race that they have had for this division here in New Hampshire. He will be the twelfth different yeah. winner. Racetrack. And even the season, only Joe Nimichek would be a repeat winner. Yeah, that's it. This year, but you're right, at this racetrack, they've never had a repeat winner in this Cubs Series racing. Hey, Tony Stewart there in second, Kevin LePage in the 40 and third. There's about five or six cars that are very, very, very tight in line there. This thing is going to go down to the checkered flag and one slip, and you could go from second to tenth. Seven to go, getting awful close to the end of this. The Page car, not as good as it's been. No. That man goes to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway tomorrow to start practice for the Indianapolis 500. Robert Presley there, he's in ninth spot, and there's Earnhardt in 10, just ahead of them, the 52. Rub is on the lead lap. So eighth, ninth, and 10th. Led by Kevin Grubb. They've got Mike McLaughlin in the picture now, 34. It'll be five to go next time they get to the strike for the leader, Buckshot Jones. 
You know, that's another point story right there. Buckshot's fifth in points. Only 119 out of first. So it'll tighten things up for him as well. See Kevin Grubb there in the 52. Give him Mike McLaughlin a hard time. Mike. He is actually a little quicker in the center part of the corner than McLaughlin is. You see him close up right in that area right there. The battle Carlin. So many of these young drivers have done so well here at New Hampshire today. They've done so well all season long. I don't know if there's another series in America that's got as many young, talented drivers who are having such great years as this series. Long straightaways here at New Hampshire. And tight turns. Yep, 1,500 feet long, the straightaway. Turns are virtually flat. You know, Casey Atwood, had he not had the problems that he had there by making that mistake going into turn one, he would certainly have the second place car. He's been very, very fast. And you see Buckshot right now, when he looks in the mirror, all he sees is the two eyeballs of the Casey Atwood behind him there. I mean, he is really running a great race. First time ever at the Speedway. It's amazing. Youngest driver in the field. There he is. Casey Atwood, car number 28. Hero of Nashville Speedway. They wondered if he could run any place other than Nashville. Yep. Well, yeah. well he went to uh, Rockingham earlier this year and qualified yeah. right up front there. I mean, he's not a, just a one-track uh, type of young man. He has talent wherever he goes. Double zero, Buckshot Jones. Finished fourth at Daytona. Fourth at Talladega. Here we go, side by side, down the front straightaway, Casey Atwood trying to get back in the lead lap, and you can see Buckshot saying, hey, we're go good to go, goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> He's not going to mess with him. That's it, God bless you, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you think Ricky Pearson was on the radio at about that point? Probably so. I think so. Pearson is crew chief. Buckshot Jones. They're coming to the white flag. And don't leave us, folks. Another whole race for the NASCAR Bush North Series yet to come today here on TNN. One more mile to go. Eli, this is probably the most tense time in a race car that a driver ever has. Is when you have a good lead like this, you don't want to do anything to give the race away. This would be win number two of the year for Pontiac. Bobby Labonte won at Darlington. And the second career win for Buckshot Jones in his 67th start. A Georgian takes the checkers in New Hampshire. Buckshot Jones wins. Tony Stewart second. LePage is third. Purvis fourth. LaJoy will finish fifth. Glenn Allen Jr. sixth. Mike McLaughlin crosses the line in seventh. Grubb is eighth. Presley is ninth. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is tenth. And you're right, that's not how the car looked when it started. But it looks mighty pretty for Buckshot Jones right now. We'll be talking to him and bringing you the NASCAR Bush North Series come out 100. All yet to come today, live on TNN Motorsports. Buckshot Jones atop the world. Glenn Jarrett. Hey, come down here, buddy. Now, I know... The way that this race started on the first lap when things went all haywire there that uh, you didn't think you were going to get to talk to me. And it's been a long time since you visited me here in Victory Lane, buddy. Good, congratulations. Great job. Thanks a lot. You know, yeah, we were there at the get-go, got in that wreck. But, you know, after we run a couple of laps, the car still run great. But, you know, I got to say thanks to our sponsors, Bayer, Alka-Seltzer, Keebler, Brunswick, Pontiac, Goodyear Tires. Uh, you know, without them, you know, we wouldn't be here. But Ricky, the guys, they're the ones that deserve the credit. They got the car running good, got it back in here, and got it fixed. But there's one thing I want to say to my dad, because I know he's watching. Remember the deal that we made in your office? Ron Johnson, Vivian, Angela are all there. So I'll be there Monday to pick it up. I got a feeling, Billy, you're going to have to buy something. I don't know what it is. But uh, uh, talk about the race a little bit. Right there at the end, you had pretty much things the way you wanted them, except that 28 car. Good thing he was allowed down because he was really pressuring you. Yeah, he was. Uh, I'll tell you that, Casey Atwood, he's, he's one heck of a driver. Uh, I'm glad he was allowed down because, uh, you know, I couldn't do it. I was doing everything we, I could do to hold him back. And uh, 
Finally, he got a run, and there's nothing I can do to him. You want to tell us what Billy's going to give you when you get back? The Harley Davidson. <laughs> <laughs> Harley Davidson. Now he'll be on the he'll be on the ride with them next year. Buckshot, congratulations, good job today. Hope to see you again here soon. Thanks a lot. Okay, we'll let these guys celebrate. As you said, Eli, his second career victory. The last came in Milwaukee of 96. Is that right? And again, yeah, except July of 96 on a flat one-mile track like this. If you're just joining us, let's go back to the very beginning of the race. This is the very start at noon Eastern, and Buckshot was involved in this mess. Watch him kick to the outside. That's him in that black double zero. Tell you that could have really, as Glenn said, could have ended his day for all intents and purposes right there. Eli, that's incredible. He made contact on the outside wall and did not hurt the driving of the car. That's incredible. What's the deal here? A guy just likes flat tracks. Is that a, a feel that a driver has? I, I think it just happened that way because he's been in contention to win on many, many times. I think Buckshot's one of the rising stars here. Don't, don't uh, label him just a one-mile track driver. When we come back, more in wrapping up the Gum Out 200, then we'll set the stage for the Gum Out 100. It's coming up next. It's just a bit after the Gum Out 200 for the NASCAR Bush Series, the NASCAR Bush North Series cars, you see, being gridded now on pit road. And we should be going green before too much longer in 100 laps for the Bush North Series drivers. Towards the garage we go now, Matt Yoakum. Tony Stewart, another second place this year. You can woulda, coulda, shoulda racing to death. If we'd had a yellow and you were bushed up, did you have anything for him? Uh, I don't know. I mean, right there toward the end, we were running about the same times as Buckshot. So, uh, you know, we were pretty happy with the way that, that we finished. We, uh, I just kind of wanted to make sure that I kept the, the 40 car behind us. But, uh, you know, the Shell Pontiac crew did a great job today. They did a great job in the pits, gaining us some spots. And, uh, you know, it was just a matter of trying to stay up with the racetrack all day. It seemed like the track kept getting slicker and slicker. And uh, we just kept making changes, kept getting us going forward. Well, another good run for the Rushville Rocket. Tonight, he heads off to the Brickyard. Meanwhile, we'll be heading off now to bring you a tech fact brought to you by the more than 1,900 AutoZone stores across America. Glenn Jarrett with a truly shocking story. Well, for the past couple of weeks, all we've heard about in the NASCAR Bush Series and Winston Cup Series are shock absorbers, new rules at Talladega. Well, I'll tell you, shock absorbers are awfully important at Loudoun, New Hampshire as well. Gene Need, who is the crew chief on the number 10 Duraloop Chevrolet, is going to show us how the shock dyno works. Every team has one. Gene, tell us about this thing. All right, what we can do is uh, we can we can change pistons, shim stacks for rebound compression. We change change rebound compression on the shock. When we get all done changing them, we want to be able to take and test the thing, simulate how it's going to work on a race car. So what we do is we take and put it on our shock dyno. We run the thing, and we can look at a graph, tell how the shock works, see if we want to make any adjustments or try it or whatever we want to do. So that's pretty much what we do with it, and we use it every day. This little piece of equipment right here at about $15,000, probably the most important piece of equipment on the truck. Indeed, the story is shocks as Glenn Jarrett fills us in with the assistance of Gene Need. Well, quite a show for Buckshot Jones and the NASCAR Bush Series. But don't leave us now. These Bush North Series drivers put on quite a race of their own. That's coming up when we return to Loudon in a moment. There's no series standings now have Mike McLaughlin showing the way. They see the five-point margin over Matt Kenseth. We knew things would uh, shake up just a little bit, guys. Oh, yeah. You know, Mike leading, but uh, Earnhardt coming in, uh, leading the early part of the year as far as points. This thing's going to change oh, all yeah. year long, I think. Just yeah, about a third of the way through. Race after race after race, the whole series has become so competitive that, I mean, it's virtually impossible to go to one of these things without watching significant point changes in the top ten. To the victor go the spoils. Buckshot Jones and the team celebrating in victory lane. We're back in a moment. <laughs> 